What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python and Pandas tutorial video. As you well know, all the cool kids plot in 3D now, uh, so now we need to teach you guys how to do it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we have, uh, we do need to have matplotlib, pyplot still, but we also have to import um, mpl underscore, or actually rather, from mpl dot or underscore toolkits dot mplot 3d import axes 3 capital D now um, that's why I don't think it'll work with pandas if anybody knows how you can plot 3d with pandas uh, feel free to let me know pretty sure you're gonna have to do it this way though um, we can leave all of this other data here Except all the plotting, basically. So we'll just do that, and let's get. Well, we can leave plot show there, I suppose. Um, mute. Now, so let's say uh, we want to compare maybe price to the high minus low, and then see if there's any correlation between the high minus low and and price visually. Okay, so um, don't know anybody that does this. Uh, <laughs> I just want to show you 3D plotting with the data set that we're using. So we're going to say uh, 3D equals plt.figure empty palms dot g c a and then parentheses projection equals 3D. And basically what this does, oops, put uh, quotes around that. Basically what this does is it notifies that, hey, we're going to plot in 3D. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to make a scatter plot. So we're going to say 3D.scatter. And first we're going to say df.index. And df.index will just be the index of the date. Okay, so df index. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and we want to get rid of index column for now. We'll bring it back one of these days. But for now, we want to get rid of that. So df index is not dates. I don't think it's going to handle the dates very well in matplotlib 3D. So df.index, now that'll just be a, I think it'll probably start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it just goes all the way through. It might start at 1, I'm not sure which one it starts with, we'll find out. Uh, so df index, and then we're going to say df, uh, we'll do h minus l, and then df close. Okay, so those are the three things. We have x, y, and a z now for the scatter plot that we're going to do. And then we're going to say 3d.set underscore x label and then make some print or, uh, quotes there. We're gonna copy this, paste, paste, x, y, z. Our x label is just the index. Our y label is h minus l. And then finally, our z label is close. And that will should be enough. We'll find out, I suppose. And so let's go ahead and save and run that. And we sure enough, we get our 3D plot here. So here we have, um, and just as for the record, I think the back arrow, okay, the arrows don't do anything. This pan basically does what all the clicks do. Zoom works. And it's, oops, I didn't mean to hit save figure. And I don't know if subplots works or not. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Oh, it does. Okay, so we can do that. But basically the arrows don't work. There's no point to this. And zoom works at least though. Now. Um, so if we do this, we can see, okay, so this was the price. Looks like, I think it starts at zero, I don't know. So this is price, right? And then what we can do though, is we can um, turn this a little bit, right? And we can see this is high minus low. So as the high minus low goes up, it almost looks like that mostly happens when price is low, right? Because this was the close price. So this seems to happen more often, like the high minus low variance of so volatility, I suppose we could call it seems to happen more when the close price is lower than when the close price is higher. It seems to get pretty tight as you get higher price, which is odd. You would kind of assume that high minus low is either at the extremes on either end, but looks more to me like it's kind of low. But anyway, so that's um, just an example of doing some 3D plotting. Um, I thought Zoom worked, but it does not look like Zoom works. I lied. Anyway, so there's your 3D plot. We have a lot of plots on here, so it kind of lags on my computer, and depending on what kind of computer you have, it probably lags even more. This is all plotting with your G or your CPU, rather, not your GPU. If you plot it on your GPU, you'd get a lot better results, but uh, this is CPU right here. So anyway, we'll close out of that. 
Um, and so there's always like all kinds of stuff that we could plot here. We could plot um, something like this. Like we can have index high minus low, and then we could do let's say volume, um, and then df volume here. And so we could can compare. You know, does how does the high minus low react with volume, right? So we have index. That's just so really we won't notice anything here, but as volume goes up, well volume, first of all, volume has gone up since the beginning, interesting. Uh, and then here we can compare as high minus low gets larger, what does volume do? Or as volume gets larger, what does high minus low do? So we can see that as the two of them rise to kind of together, because the, you can see like as this goes up, it seems as though volume goes up, but there are some where volume is still kind of low. Anyway, um, Probably no, no, uh, no money to be made in this kind of analysis, but I just want to show you guys uh, 3D plotting, uh, just some basic uh, examples. Now, you can do all kinds of 3D plots. You can do planes, you can do bars and all that. I have tutorials on those as well. If you want to dig into more um, 3D plotting, uh, you can check those out. Um, so anyway, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.